Dr. Lori. I'm at the Juniata Valley Home and Garden Show. <laughs> Not far from we are. Penn State. That's right. Wow, my antique appraisal comedy tour is starting soon. Let's see what they've got. The values I'm giving you are based on retail values, based on actual sales records where similar pieces have sold recently. It's not a list price, it's not a hope, it's actually based on what something similar has sold for and what it is. We'll talk about art, antiques, collectibles, and you're going to get the truth. You remember the truth. <laughs> Think back to when people just told you the truth. That's what's going to happen today. So I'll break some hearts, I'll make some millionaires. All right, I'm starting here with Gone with the Wind because it's big. Hi, Alexis. What do you know about movie posters in general? Like, for example, what am I looking at when I'm looking through the loop here? I want to see how the ink is applied, and that will actually give you an idea. Who signed it? Olivia de Havilland, of course, from Margaret Mitchell's famous, famous novel. Her novel, I appraised one of the novels in an event like this. It was signed by Margaret Mitchell. It was given to a woman's grandfather in Atlanta. It, pu it was published in 1936, the novel. And that piece was worth $61,000 when I appraised it. Now, that's the novel, the first edition of the book. So if you have that hanging around the house, you know, you want to think, some of you are laughing, I don't have that around the house. Well, you never know. And how much did you pay for it at the estate sale, may I ask? 50 bucks. Did you negotiate with the estate sale people? Or did you see it and buy it and run? There's a couple of issues with it. First of all, do you see the buckling here? It's kind of wavy on this side. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. Now, you have an autograph on it, which increases its value. If it was just the actual piece, I would say $1,000 includes the frame. But now we have to add the actual autograph, which is difficult to get, right? So you don't just always have Olivia de Havilland or Butterfly McQueen or any of those actors who were in that particular movie on a, a poster like this. This is not the typical poster either. Tara is burning, right? This, usually it's the one where Rhett and Scarlett are kissing. That's the characteristic one that everyone looks for. When you have rare posters like these of a particular movie that's very famous, plus an autograph, value on this $3,000. So for $50, you did great. There's great stuff at estate sales, yard sales, antique malls, thrift stores, great stuff. Speaking of great stuff, let's go to this. How did we acquire this? I bought it at an auction. It's a and Schnitter. <laughs> Didn't I say that very well? I'm very impressed by that, that this Italian girl could say that German word very well. <laughs> Dutch German. So how did you acquire it at an auction? Why did you buy it? You got excited. Got part of the, part of the excitement. <laughs> how much did you pay for it? I paid 400 Yeah. Nice. It's very intricate. It's quite old. It is stained. So some intricate, of course, difficult to do, stained, it's right up against the glass. I would say it's kissing the glass, Mwah! which means you've got dirt, condensation, and moisture inside because it's right up against the glass. I'd like to see you get it out of this frame, put a mat in between or spacers in between. That would be helpful. I like the blue backing. It's in very good condition, but I think you paid full price for it. So value added even at the auction, when auction should be lower, it's worth about $400. Date, it dates to about 1885 to about 1900. Okay, so someone's willing to buy it for more than that, probably a collector, but on the retail market, you won't, you won't be able to resell it for that. What I would do, the person who wants to buy it for whatever they want to buy it for, add 25% and then you'll sell it. Oh my gosh, Dr. Lori, that's not very nice, right? You're thinking that's not very nice. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> what you really need to do is you need to know how the market works because that person is not telling you as much as they will actually pay when they're making you an offer for it. Oy, oy, oy. How'd we acquire this? What's your name? How are you? Good? You feel good? You look good. God bless you. God bless you. 86. How's it feel? Do your knees work? <laughs> like mine don't, and I'm not 86. <laughs> Well, you know, you got to work on that. So how did you acquire this piece of stoneware, glazed stoneware, with the nice, of course, lion at Scutchons with the rings? And these are iron rings. How did you acquire this? This was left in your house when you bought it. OK. How old do you think it is? How old is your house? All right. You think your house was built before 1950? Oh, yeah. All right. Was your house built before 1900? Probably not. Okay, so I've got a 1900 to 1950s house, 
and I've got an 1875 piece of stoneware. So someone must have brought it to your house, right? It wasn't just sitting there and they built the house over it. They left it right at the house. And they brought it from the southern Mediterranean. That means they brought it from Italy, Spain, or, yeah, Italy or Spain. Well, that sounds good. It does sound good. <laughs> and it's big and it's in good shape. And it's hand glazed, and it was used for storage. How do I know? Look at how the glaze goes inside. Look at the ridges inside that's hand built. I think somebody put your umbrellas or... Oh, you're not going to fit a lot of umbrellas in there. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe. So hand built, you can see the ridges below the line of the glaze, and then you can see the glaze here. So what do you think it's worth? More than 100? Less than 100? 100 or 2? Probably 200. Yeah. yeah, nice. I like it. Now, where are you going to put it when you bring it home? Eh, the same place it's always been. I love to hear that. I love to hear that. You know why? Because it's always good not to mess with it. It's good there. It's been good there for all these years. Let's leave it alone, <laughs> right? Unless, of course, it's jewelry. Then you could always bring it to me. My, my birthday's in January. <laughs> anyway, that's a nice piece. All right, let's come over to this table. We were talking about movies. Let's talk about this piece. Hi, hon. Hello. How are you? Nice to see you. How did you acquire this jack-in-the-box that is the Tin Man? Is it a music box? Yes. Okay, I never wind the music boxes. If you want to wind a music box three times and stop, okay? Don't overwind. Don't get overzealous. I had one aunt. All the Italian music boxes she used to have. My mother was one of nine, you know, all the Italian ladies. <laughs> Music box, da, 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 like a hundred times, we'd be like, Aunt Margaret, you're going to ruin them. Oh, no, I want to hear them play. And they're all playing, and they never stop. So I don't do that. <laughs> now, a couple things. He goes straight down, correct? Yeah. Here we go. And then it comes up, and it's the 50th anniversary of uh, the, Wizard the Wizard of Oz, which is contemporary, in fact, with Gone with the Wind, which we just talked about. So this one is beautiful. Metro Goldwyn Mayer, it's a nice collectible. Do you collect Wizard of Oz? A lot of people collect Wizards of Oz. So this particular piece, but what I want you to do when you see it, you see this hinge over here? There's a missing pin in this hinge. Okay. So that pin has to be stuck back in because otherwise it's going to break off. Okay. So when we give it back to you, I want you to do that. Now, this, of course, can sit right on top. It looks like it was actually glued and the glue is old. Okay. So you could actually do that. So there was one for each one of them. Dorothy, there was the Tin Man, there was the Scarecrow, there was the Cowardly Lion, and who did I miss? Toto and Toto 2 and Toto 2. You remember that from that movie. Value on this piece, about $175. Nice. How much did you pay for it? 50 bucks is good to make three times more. You see these? These are pink styrofoam. Stink pink. Hi, honey. How are you? Right in the front. I made her blush because I'm talking about this pink styrofoam. Why do I not want this anywhere near your art antiques or collectibles? What does this stuff do? It'll like never deteriorate, right? But it will off gas. Okay? So if it off gases, you're going to have that actual element within this. So you're going to take all this out, if you would. Don't put newspaper in there either. Not the Sentinel. Don't put the newspaper in there. Don't crumple it up. Read the paper. <laughs> Don't crumple it. Paper's not, newspaper's not good for that either. How did you acquire this? She met a farmer in Bucks County, but she was in England. You don't know how their paths cross. She came away with this teapot. Were the pink uh, pieces in it? Here's the good news and the bad news. First of all, the good news. The good news is you have the lid, and the lid is glazed. It also has, of course, these elements here that are sort of the hand-painted um, silvered elements. Nice, right? Any other pieces with it? Just the pot? Just the pot. Well, it came from England, but it didn't come from a wealthy part of England. <laughs> this is pretty run-of-the-mill, early 20th century. Mm -hmm. So basically, she might have married well, but he didn't get all the good stuff. <laughs> kind of like Prince Harry. <laughs> right? He decided to change things up. This particular piece, I don't think he had an easy time of it. I don't think any of those people have an easy time of it, personally. Although, it would be nice to wear the jewels, wouldn't it? <laughs> Just the crowns, a couple days. <laughs> this particular piece is a nice piece. Dates to the early part of the 20th century. I'd say value on it, just about $75. Okay? okay. And there's got to be $250 worth of styrofoam <laughs> peanuts in here. They're, they're like jammed, jammed in there. Look at them all. Wow, did you like those objects? There's more to come.